The last thing you wanna do is buy the wrong dry shampoo. You're likely to end up with white residue all over the place, your hair feeling disgusting, and ultimately not at all what it was supposed to do. You know, like make your hair feel clean. So don't stress it. I've got these, the most popular dry shampoos on the market. We're gonna talk about them. I'm gonna tell you exactly how they work. We're gonna see if any of them are for you. And if so, which one? Okay, before we dive in, I wanna set some expectations. I am not a scientist, and this is not gonna be some hyper-scientific test. What I am is a professional hairstylist that's been a stylist for 30 years, worked on thousands of different heads, using thousands of different products. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down exactly how these different products function. I know that when you buy a volumizer, you want volume. And that's the most important thing. But in this scenario where we're dealing with dry shampoos, I'm not entirely sure what you want because different people want different things from their dry shampoo. So I'm just gonna explain exactly how all of these work so that you have all of the information necessary so that you can make the best choice for you. Now, let's talk about exactly what we're gonna cover in this test. First of all, we're gonna cover what people are saying about each product online. We're gonna talk about how it actually feels in your hair. We're gonna cover the oil absorption, how much volume and or texture it will give your hair, whether or not it's suitable for all hair textures. And just a heads up, I'm gonna go ahead and put links in the description as well as the pinned comment for all of these products so that you can find them easily. Okay, and number one, let's start with the Amica. Now, this is the Perk Up Dry Shampoo. People online are saying that it leaves zero residue. It's got a lightweight feel. It's fresh, subtle scent. I guess it's fruity vanilla. It's talc free, reduces oils and adds volume. It's easy to use, but it might leave behind a little bit of a gritty texture. Okay, so first, let's take a look at the ease of application. I'd say pretty easy. It's got a pretty strong spray, um, but it's not hard to control at all. But for this test, I actually want to put all of these products on dark hair mannequins so that you have a better idea of actually what it looks like because my gray hair is gonna kind of hide some of it. it. Might not look as dramatic as it actually could be. So let's start right here, let's shake it up. I'm just gonna work it out here, work it through a little bit like you would. This actually looks like there's a reasonable amount of residue there. It's not terrible, but you definitely notice this. But as far as the scent goes, what does it smell like? How does it smell? It smells good. Not baby powder, but it smells like a really light, a little sweet. Would it stop you from buying it? No, yeah. I like it. You like it? Yeah. There you go. Keeps you in line. It does not feel bad at all. It really, it doesn't feel like gritty, like some shampoos or dry shampoos will feel. It feels soft. You definitely feel it in your hair, but I honestly wouldn't say in a bad way at all. I'm actually quite impressed. It feels really nice in there. Okay, now as far as the oil absorption goes, before each product that I use, I actually put a wax in my hair. Now this specific wax I chose on purpose because it had a little bit of shine to it. Applied it through my hair, and then I would use the product or the dry shampoo on that. And that's why I used it because I wanted to see the shine. I wanted it to look greasy and oily and not be like a matte finish wax. And I figured that this would give you the best idea as to how these products are actually going to function in absorbing and hiding or removing that greasy oil. The second I sprayed the Amica in, I noticed that it immediately looked dry as though I just got out of the shower and didn't put any wax in it whatsoever. That is absolutely impressive. Now, also, I think it's important to mention that when I'm talking about volume and texture with these particular products, these are not volumizing products. The point of these is not to give your hair a lot of lift. So if you've got fine, thin hair, then you're not gonna wanna rely on a dry shampoo to create all of your volume. The point of them, if they do, is to give you a little bit more lift, but they're really to kind of accentuate what you already have going on versus be the foundation for volume. When I say texture, there's a difference between feeling in your hair and texture. Texture speaks more to the amount of pieciness or texture that you can get in your hair, if you can get kind of movement and texture in it. And volume is simply, can I get lift in it? Is it airy or does it weigh your hair down? I mean, my hair is light. I said, it's fine. Yeah, I would definitely say that it gives a good amount of volume. Now, as far as the buildup and the overall suitability of these products go, the way I wanted to do this test was to first rinse the hair just with water and then dry it and see how much of the product just comes out 
with a water rinse. And then after that, I shampooed my hair just one time, then dried it to see if that got any residual of the product out. I recognize that most people, especially if you're using a dry shampoo, are a type of person that don't wanna shampoo very often. You're trying to get away without shampooing. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't want to just rinse your hair off with water in between the times that maybe you're using shampoo, or maybe you're just using a conditioner as a shampoo. In those scenarios, I wanted to see, are any of these products going to build up on the hair and not rinse out with water? And if so, how much are they gonna build up? Is this gonna be a concern over time to where maybe if you've got thin, fine hair, this actually ends up building up to the point where it starts to weigh your hair down a bit. And then here is what we found. Okay, so just wetting it down and drying it, I still feel a little bit in there. It's faint, it definitely, some of it came out, but it's there a little bit. Let's shampoo it once and see if it all comes out. Just in shampoo time it's gone. Yeah, I definitely don't think it's gonna build up. You're going places with this. Okay, next is the Living Proof, which is definitely the most expensive product on this particular list. People online are saying that it's best for color treated hair. They say it removes dirt, sweat, and oil so your hair feels clean, soft, shine upon application. It's invisible, fast absorbing, but sometimes the spray nozzle can be a little intense. That's a lot of power. Okay, so this one says spray in a sweeping motion, wait 30 seconds, and then massage into the scalp. Uh, you're gonna get some overspray. It's got a pretty large spray. It would be a little bit harder to fine tune where you apply this if you just wanted it in one area. Now, as far as ease of application goes, the only difference is that you have to wait for 30 seconds. Do you absolutely have to do that? I don't know, but that is one extra step. So something that you might wanna think about, maybe it doesn't matter. Okay, now let's see how noticeable this is. Got client number two here. Let's see what we got. This is definitely less noticeable than the Amica. On my hair, I didn't notice any of this product or the Amica in my hair because my hair is so white. I will say though that as I'm breaking this up, I wouldn't be hyper concerned about seeing too much. But if your hair is really dark, I think on any of these products, you're probably gonna notice a little something. Now, as far as the scent goes, here's what we found about that. <laughs> I'll never get old. It's, it's a clean smell. Okay, would it stop you from would it stop you from buying it? No, not at all. Would it stop you from wearing it? No. Um, I feel a little bit more of this than I did of the Amica. Or I feel more on my hands when I take it out of my hair, and that's how I know that there's definitely a difference. I would say it's great. Uh, it looks dry. Again, I don't see that I have any real oil in my hair. I'm still getting a good amount of volume. All in all, it feels good. I just think you're gonna feel a little bit more grit on your hands. Okay, after just one rinse of water, no shampoo, it actually feels pretty soft. I think it actually took most of it out. Okay, after the shampoo, yeah, it's completely out. Maybe a little bit softer as I'm feeling it, but yeah, I think most of it came out with just rinsing it with water. Okay, next up is the Batiste. The ba Batiste? Batiste. I hope I'm saying that right. Batiste. It's kind of a classic favorite that you can find at the drugstore. I believe actually this is where Diana got this and my wife actually does use this. It's budget friendly. It is less expensive than some of the other ones on this list. They're saying that it adds body and texture. And people are saying that you definitely need to thoroughly rub in the white powder. Let's find out exactly what they mean. By the way, if you're getting any value out of these, do me a massive favor, hit that subscribe button. It's totally free or share this with one of your friends or even better yet, like it, do all that stuff. As far as the ease of application goes, this is how that turned out. The spray isn't ridiculous. It's a little bit less strong of a spray than the Living Proof was. Uh, and then it says to brush lightly to remove the excess residue and style as desired. Completely unrelated, volumizer brush. One of my favorite brushes, you want extra volume. Link in the description, these things are awesome. Not sponsored. <laughs> I've been using it for so many years, it's my favorite brush. Ease of application, easy. Let's see it on our next model. Okay, so this is the white powder, or the white residue that they're talking about. This is why they're saying that it needs to be worked out thoroughly. It actually comes out pretty well. I would say of these three so far, this has actually came out of the hair the most. It looks the least noticeable. Yeah, that's impressive. As far as the scent goes, well, here's what it smells like. Gives me a little bit of that uh, feel like I'm on vacation vibe. Like tropical vacation. Does it smell like tropical vacation? Yeah. 
because that is the actual scent. So we're we going on vacation. Is this a hint? <laughs> it works for me. Yes. <laughs> Um, it's, it's actually really soft. I don't feel a lot in my hair. It almost has a baby powder feeling in your hands, but the feeling would definitely not make me not buy it or use it. Again, and you know, honestly, I feel like all three of these have been very strong so far in oil absorption. I'm not seeing any oil in my hair right now. I'm still getting good volume and I'm able to get a bit of texture in it. There's a little bit of texture there. Yeah, it feels soft. Okay, so after just rinsing it out with no shampoo, it feels like most of it's gone. But like always, let's do a shampoo and see if it feels any different. Just in shampoo time. It's gone. There's no concern that I would have about this building up on your hair at all. So there you go. Okay, now for the next two products, we're gonna switch things up a little bit. Now there's a big pull right now between aerosol or spray dry shampoos and more powder-based not in our solid dry shampoos. And some people like one style, some people like the other. So our next one is the Odell, which is definitely the cheapest on this entire list. Online, people are saying that it's easy to use. It's great for bangs. It gives roots visible lift, but must be massaged in thoroughly. And let's start with the ease of application. Directions, dust at roots, massage in, and pretend you shower. Just in Already, as far as ease of application, much more complicated to apply. If you can see this, I've got it all over my shoulders now. It's, and it leaves a little bit of a faint haze there. Definitely the hardest to apply so far. Yeah, the noticeability factor is gonna be high, but let's see. So we've got our next model here, but okay. Honestly, I'm not even looking forward to this. Why did I choose to do this in an office that's all black? It's gonna make such a mess all over my office. Oh my gosh, come on. Oh God, it's gonna be everywhere. Look, this makes so much sense to me right now. This, to begin with, is the most dramatic that we've seen so far. This is definitely the most white residue that I've seen on any of the products we've tested today. So let's see if we can work this out because that's what they say. They say just really go vigorously through it. That actually comes out pretty well. I'm genuinely surprised. When I worked it through my hair earlier, it seemed like it wasn't going to come out at all. As much as this is a nightmare to apply, it actually isn't as noticeable as I would have expected. Okay, but how does it smell? Okay, don't do that. <coughs> that was not smart. It's very subtle. Yes. It smells sweet. So then obviously, would it stop you from buying it? No. Absolutely not. It's like the end of the night when your perfume wears off, you can kind of smell like a hint. What perfume is it? I don't know, a good one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This definitely has chalkiness to it. You definitely feel a little bit more in the hair. Okay, if you can see my hand here. This to me is very resemblant of like baby powder. It's just on you. Makes your hair feel a little bit thicker and coarser. Just like the others, it seems to have done a pretty good job of absorbing the oil. I don't think it did a better job than any of the other ones so far, um, but I also don't think it's done a worse job. I'm definitely getting a bit more texture out of this one. I can kind of almost use it in a way to style my hair, which I haven't been able to do with the other ones. This one definitely gives me a little bit more movement and control out of it. So I think there is a little bit of give and take. If you want a little bit more control out of your hair, you're gonna need to give a little bit and realize that you're gonna feel a little bit more in your hair. Okay, after just rinsing it with water, it's mostly come out, but I definitely feel some still in there. There's just a little bit of tackiness to my fingers. Okay, yeah, after shampooing my hair, it's all out. There's nothing left. So it isn't something that would build up on your hair if you're shampooing it, you know, once a week or so. It's not that it's gonna build up too much over time, but it's definitely not just gonna rinse out if you're just rinsing your hair down with water. Definitely something to keep in mind. Okay, and the last product on our list today is the Bumble and Bumble. Pray a pro Pray a powder. Pret? I don't even know how to pronounce this. It's dry shampoo. Okay, so this retails for $34, and let's see what people are saying about it online. So they're saying that it's a powder formula. I think we can figure that out. It includes UV filters, which can be nice. Got a little bit of a tricky application, which we're gonna find out here in a minute. And it's best to apply it at night to allow it to sink in. Okay, so I think this brings up a really good point, and I wanted to hit on this. So there's two different schools of thought as to when you should actually apply dry shampoo. Some people say that you apply them before the oil problem happens, and some people say that you apply them 
after the oil problem happens. The pros and cons are kind of on the fence, and I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do it. On one hand, it's just saying that you're gonna apply this and then it's going to soak up the oil and so that you won't ever experience the overly oily issues. Whereas the other one, applying it the day after or applying it when it's actually oily, is just trying to fix a problem. So on one hand, you're addressing a problem before it comes. And on the other hand, you're addressing the problem once it's already arised. I really think it's gonna be up to you and it might have more to do with the specific product that you're using or style of products and what you want from the product. We'll get to it in a second. But first, let's just talk about the ease of use. You know, they're not that easy to apply, honestly. Like, they just kind of get everywhere. I prefer sprays. That actually comes off a little bit better than the Odell did. This is actually one of the hardest ones, unfortunately, to apply. So that's a little bit concerning. Again, again, again. All right, here's our last one. Let's start here. Oh God, it's just everywhere. Well, didn't go away from my desk there. You know what? I will say that actually worked in pretty well as well. I expected to see a lot more residue up here and I'm really not seeing as much as I anticipated. This came out pretty well. I think if you didn't overuse it like I did, you wouldn't have that much of a problem with seeing it. Deanna. I like it. Would the scent stop you from wearing it? No, 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 no. It's almost not necessarily floral. It's a feminine smell. Yeah, it's definitely feminine. Yeah. Okay, so this one does the same thing, right? You can see it on my hands. Uh, you're definitely gonna feel this. So of these five, the two powders definitely have the most textural feeling to them. This one, I think, has a little bit more feeling to it. I would say it absorbed the oil really well. I think they all have been very comparable in terms of how they actually absorb the oil. My hair looks and feels dry versus oily or greasy. This one I think gives the most amount of texture to the hair. I'm getting a good amount of volume and control and definitely I'm getting a fair amount of texture, quite a bit actually. Comparable to me using a wax or a pomade, almost that amount of texture. Okay, with just rinsing it out, no shampoo, just the water, it actually feels pretty good. I'm kind of surprised. So this feels like there's less of the residual in there than even of the Odell. This feels softer. I would almost guess that most all of it is out. There might be a little tiny bit in there. It feels pretty good. All right. Now let's get it shampooed. Just in okay, yeah, as I expected, after one shampoo, there's nothing left. It's all gone. Okay, so let's talk about some final thoughts here. Now, first of all, these five different products really kind of fit into two different categories. If you're a person that wants more volume in their hair and actually on some level maybe wants to use a dry shampoo as a volumizer, the best result you're gonna get in that format is if you use one of the powders like the Odell or the Bumble and Bumble. They just have a lot more texture, you're gonna feel a lot more in your hair, but you're gonna get more of that volume that you're looking for. At the same time, they are still going to take away a lot of the greasy feeling that your hair has got, so they'd still do that job. They just come with more texture and more volume. On the other hand, if you really want your hair to feel soft and your main goal is not to worry about getting it big and all the volume, but you're just trying to get that greasy feeling out of it, then you're likely gonna be better off with one of the sprays because they give your hair a lot less volume and texture, they're much easier to apply, and they tend to feel a little bit softer in your hair, or at least these three felt much softer than the two powders that we tested. So either way, I hope that helps you make the right decision for you, and again, those will be listed in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can find easy access to all of them. Now, if you've got another test that you want to see me do, comment below. Let me know exactly what you want to see and what you want to know. Did that rhyme? It rhymed. <laughs> you, I will see in this video over here. <laughs> see you there. Bye.